like usually when the, the new guys came at that stage what we did was we went to language school for you know maybe a number of months maybe close to a year went out into a parish for, for one year then to um, practice in order to consolidate what we'd learned and then um, back for another full year at language and then the fourth year was back out in the parish and at the end of that period then you know I decided I'd like to work, work with workers so before I went on vacation Columban suggested well look around and get a place and that's what I did. You see Korea had very tr troubled um, 20th century like you know there was first of all the occupation by Japan that was a very cruel period like because the Japanese basically tried to eliminate Korean language like for example children going to school had to speak Japanese and if they used Korean like you know it was just like a string around their neck and um, if they used it three times it was marked they were beaten people had to change their names to Japanese times you know so they went through all of that and then there was a the struggle for independence but then Korea was divided then arbitrarily after Japanese after Japan lost the war and you had the, Co you had the Korean civil war then north and south terrible destruction like the big powers intervened and I mean the number of Koreans who died and the country was bombed you know basically all the trees were burnt you know, they, so the Columbans a real big number of Col Columbans came into Korea after the war and it was basically helping working with the people you know to rebuild the country you know at all levels so I think the missionaries at that stage kind of um, I threw their lives and the work they did you know, showed, um, I suppose, um, a good side of the church. And then the country was blessed in the sense that they had a great leader, a Cardinal Kim Suhan, you know, who was a charismatic figure and very much concerned with the poor, he had a tremendous vision. So all of that was happening, you know, when I came. And, um, and then you see you had, um, the country was changing from, uh, what's the word, an agriculture country to be, to be urbanized. Literally millions of people were leaving the countryside and coming into the cities. And the culture they had was like of a rural uh, community. And suddenly they're inside in this big urban mass. They have to work in factories. So they're looking around for a new vision of life that will help them to cope with this, you know, kind of new reality. And um, small churches, Christian churches, kind of gave a framework and a sense of community. So literally thousands of people came into the church at that time you know not into just the catholic church but into um all the um you know the christian denominations so i suppose it was a particularly positive wave you know and uh, at that time moving towards christianity and i happened to come into korea at that time you know and got involved with workers you know and the church was i mean that man I mentioned, Chun Tu Hwan, had banned all organizations, banned public, me you know, meetings where groups would get together to think and talk about their lives. So the only space where, um, what's the word, um, where workers could get together was a space provided by the church, you know. Right. But what we did with workers was we, because there was no place for them to, you know, to meet, as I said, with um, a religious sister and a full-time uh, worker who had been who had worked in factories, we provided um, an open space, a kind of a family house, where people could come and talk and relax and have a meal. And I was basically living. I was living there, so just meeting people, chatting with them, listening, and then we'd organise things together. You know, maybe just an outing, and if they wanted to, you know, you know, learn music. We try, we try to organize a person to come in and teach the guitar. If the group wanted to learn more about the labor law, organize someone to come in and, you know, form small groups. One of the big, um, a lot of the young workers like had left school at the age of 14, you know, and um, they didn't have great confidence. So we developed a small five week program, you know, two nights a week on basic, um, what's the word, um, you know, group dynamics or personal development and a lot of people they were very interested in that because they could come in talk to their peers make friends you know and get a bit of confidence well they were part of that overall kind of if you want to call it dislocation the government forced it like I mean the government like Pak Chung Hee 
he chose um, this exported, you know, orientated economy as to be the engine to change Korea. And to do that, what you needed was um, Korea, all Korea had was cheap labor. So he invited in the, um, the big, you know, industrialists to come in, set up factories, and he says, I will provide cheap labor. And the only way you can provide cheap labor was you know, the whole rural community. He depressed the price of agriculture products deliberately. People were forced off the land and had to come into cities and uh, they had to get jobs in factories. And because the price of agriculture products was low, food was fairly cheap. So you had a huge labor force you had cheap food, and so you had very cheap labor. And this happened like right during the 60s, the late 60s, the 70s, right into the early 80s. And that changed the face of Korea. Like, I mean, the rural population dropped from maybe 70% down to 40 to 30. And today it's heading to less than 10%. Wow. Over 90% is now urban in Korea. And um, like, the thing about Christianity, like Catholicism, Christianity was because of the European experience. It had a kind of a, a social teaching about the rights of workers, you know, and uh, the common good. Like if you take one diocese now, the, the Bishop of Wanju Diocese, where quite a few Columbans working, he was very outspoken on human rights and on freedom of expression. And he was actually jailed by um, Pak chung Hee. And um, the Columbans and the diocese there stood with them. And one of the um, uh, results was that, you know, as a, as, a, as a foreign resident here, you know, you have a residence permit. Or, pre you know, the normal one now is two years. You get two years, you're renewed again for two years. You're, per you're permitted to stay in the country. But in that stage, any of the priests who were active, it was actually, in some cases, it was reduced to one month. And you'd go to the mine. I was I never experienced that, but some of the guys ahead of me did. You'd go to the office with your documents, and they'd always ask for a new document. So you have to go back get a new document. So you spent a week preparing this, and you submitted it. You had to go back and get new ones, and then you got you got your, and your month was dated from the the original. You know, you spend a. And within two weeks, you to repeat the same thing. So, and at those stages, like, because the guys, Wanji was a rural diocese, you had to go to the port city. And transport was very bad. You had to take about a six or seven hour bus trip to be told you have to go back and get another document. It's going to full week going back and forth. And then you got it. And three weeks afterwards, you have to go through the same thing again. One of the things the Columbans set up, like in Seoul, was the idea of night schools for workers. You know, like these kids, sometimes they hadn't even come out of middle school, some of them, setting up a school where, a system where they could study at night, do an exam, maybe get middle school and then get high school recognition. The Columbans set up quite a number of those around the city, you know, and um, that was very significant. Like the groups that I worked with in Puchon during the 80s, you know, where they got, got them into small groups, get them to, you know, to share about themselves, if they're interested to learn about labor, labor, but to become reflective. Those kids, you know, like within four or five years, when the union movement began to take off again, 1987, 88, a lot of those became very key members in the labor movement, you know? So from that perspective, like the Columbans had quite a, a you know, I think a significant influence as had Mary and, all, and other missionaries, you know? Like back in the 70s and the 80s, because there was no space, there was just the government and individuals. So the church provided space for groups to form. But with the, the democratic movement taking root, you know, there was a whole space for all types of people's organizations to come into being, like for example, NGOs, trade unions, consumer groups, residence associations issue groups, environmental groups. And um, people were able to move freely and do that organization. So there was no need for the church to get involved at that level anymore. So I suppose um, you could say we, we need to get involved at a new level. One of the new levels was, I think, is um, 
accompanying groups like that, but um, you know, what's the word? Um, pointing to values. You know, like when I was involved in um, in the nineties, I got involved with um, um, rentees organizations, residents associations. Now they had the space to organize and to um, challenge the development policies, which was which were excluding res rentees. So they were basically being dumped on the side of the street. So they used to form organizations, but working with them, you know, what are key values in communities, you know, community values? How do people, you know, I suppose, go beyond oneself to think about the bigger picture? At that level, helping people to clarify values, accompanying, accompanying them. And if they're Christians, helping them to um, articulate what they're doing in terms of their faith. It was at that level we were doing it, you know. Whereas before it was more direct, you were there actually providing the space and providing um, basically the basics of organization so that people could do all that. And um, as Korean workers became, what's the word, um, more educated, there were certain types of jobs they didn't want to do. You know, the three Ds, dangerous, difficult, and dirty. And so people came in from particularly the Philippines, uh, ethnic Koreans from China, Vietnamese, even as far away as Nigeria, Iran, Iraq, Nepal, these were all beginning to come into Korea like in the 90s and then 2000s. And um, so now you've, um, Korea is changing to become a multicultural society, diverse. And so, you know, the, uh, what's the word, the tensions that come with that. So Columbans now are working with multicultural families, you know, in migrant ministry. You know, Korea, the US were building this huge, um, or they're building, the big military facilities were being built in cooperation with the US. And um, like the whole, what, is, what are the implications of that for peace, if we're for peace? So we have um, a lot of energy of the Columbans in recent years, like particularly the younger members, was um, opposing this type of militarization. That was one area. Um, another man into the whole area of interreligious dialogue you know like particularly working with with buddhists you know so you're right i think that um i think columbia and being on the margins of the church actually is a tremendous um what's the word opportunity and a privilege it means we're not saddled so to speak with maintaining the uh, the uh, the pastoral structures of the church like parishes and taking care of people at that level we're absolutely free now to, if we have the initiative and the energy and the vision <laughs> and the language, of course, to, to open up uh, new areas. Like, I think anytime the Columbans opened up something new and showed that it was valuable, the church here has welcomed us with open hands, you know, and eventually has taken it over. So we want to try and open up new things again, you know. We search for something new that has to be done. And um, I'm trying, I suppose that's being missionary, really, you know, and move on to, if we have the energy and the vision, I say, and the creativity to, to find it and set it up, you know, it's not easy at times.